Hi, I'm Marty Wolf of the Business Builder Show. I'm excited to be at Imperial Machine and Tool Company in New Jersey. We're here today to interview Mr. Chris Joust, and he's the president of, once again, Imperial Machine and Tool Company. Looking forward to a great discussion with Chris. I'm Marty Wolf. I've worked with small, mid-size, and billion-dollar companies across America. Through these experiences and being a lifelong learner, reading hundreds of books and interviewing hundreds of the brightest business minds in the world today, I now feel an obligation to share what I learned with you. Get ready to learn from the best. This is the Business Builder Show with Marty Wolf. Hi, welcome to the Business Builder Show, the show for business leaders, business owners, entrepreneurs, and professionals who seek excellence. My name is Marty Wolf. I'm the host for the Business Builder Show. I'm thrilled to be with my, I think, good friend now, Chris Joust. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? You got hit it right on the nose. Okay, so I got the name right, so we're off to a good start. Chris is the president of Imperial Tool, excuse me, Imperial Machine and Tool, Imperial Machine and Tool. And we're in New Jersey. What town are we in? Uh, Columbia, actually, our mailing address is Columbia, but we're in Blairstown Township, New Jersey. It's a beautiful facility. A little rural uh, northwestern corner of the state. We like to keep it quiet out here. And I often say to people, who would have thought there was a machine shop of this magnitude out in the middle of a cornfield in Blairstown, New Jersey? But yes, here we are. Been here for 20 years. 20 years, yeah, I saw that. Um, I was here a few months ago. We had a nice event here where you showed off your additive manufacturing or 3D printing, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, I don't even remember what the event was. What It was uh, some kind of... Uh, it was an open house. We, open house? Yeah, we occasionally have open houses for our customers, for our stakeholders. We had our neighbors in. Um, we had our congressman visit us at the time. So we typically like to open the doors up, show people what innovation is taking place in a little corner of New Jersey, what's going on uh, in additive manufacturing throughout the world. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. about that. We'll talk about additive manufacturing. But let's begin kind of as they say at the, at the beginning. So let's uh, give us uh, an overview of uh, Imperial Machine and Tool, just a quick overview of kind of where you were, where you are today. and Sure. Um, well, it's a personal story. Uh, we, I am third generation. Uh, my son and uh, daughters who are with the company are fourth generation. Uh, my grandfather started the company in 1943, actually in October of 1943. We just passed our 73rd anniversary mm -hmm. uh, last month. So um, we have always been an advanced manufacturing company. Even in the early days, my grandfather uh, was really focused on doing those things that others didn't find uh, as palatable, uh, typically challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, that carried through to my dad's tenure. Uh, my dad uh, ran the business throughout the 60s and 70s. Uh, in the 60s and 70s, we spent quite a bit of our time uh, focused on the semiconductor world. My dad uh, okay. opened the IBM account. Uh, wow. up, up until then, we had been Western Electric primarily. My grandfather was a Western Electric vendor. Um, and it was really IBM that propelled us to the position um, that we are now. And why do I say that? That's because IBM was a fledgling industry at the time. So now, it, what were you making for IBM? Well, typically, when an environment like that uh, is underway, when it's a fledgling environment, similar to cell phones of the 2000s, uh, IBM had to do everything themselves. They had to make their own chips. They had to make their own CRTs. They had mm -hmm. to make their own keyboards. Yeah. And so they relied on machine shops to closely support that developmental Got effort. it, okay. So yeah. it was very common for us to work with engineering groups to do the first of its technology. Yeah. And that's really what stood Imperial apart at the time. Um, we're willing to do things that others can't do. We were willing to do things that others would shy away from. And that's exactly what the semiconductor world needed at that time. Yeah, I found that on your website, which your website is fantastic. It is, uh, is it Imperial Machine and Tool? That's no, how they can find you, or what is it? www.imperialmachine.com Imperialmachine.com. It's a great site, so as we're going through this, you may want to look it up and, and follow along, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, the whole idea of kind of um, doing what others uh, maybe didn't want to do or couldn't do was kind of, kind of a story through your whole business, is sure. it not? And it still is. And it, it still is. It's, it's really what sets us apart. Um, we don't do well in an environment that a lot of people can fabricate in. 
Uh, we do very well in an environment where there are few people that can do what we do. Okay. It can be very challenging, as you might imagine. Yeah. Uh, when you are on the leading edge and doing some things that have not been done before, uh, it can be punishing. Um, yeah. Yeah. But really, it's what's separated the company for years and years and years. It's, it's what we stand back on. It's what I fall back on. We do things that yeah. others can't do. Some people would call that uh, a unique competitive position, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we met, as I said, uh, several months ago. Now I also saw, saw on your website, and maybe this is why we bonded uh, so quickly, is that you were a sales guy at one time. Yes. You were out there making sales calls, man. You still do, I'm sure. But that, is that kind of one of the roles you played in the early stages of your career? Well, frankly, it's what I do best. It's still what I do best. I'm a deal maker. Um, I am not a detail guy. I have uh, successfully avoided the details most of my life. <laughs> Um, yeah. I stay out of my ivory tower. I joke with people. I say a lot of shop owners want to spend time in their office or on the golf course. I want to spend time on my shop floor. I want to spend time with my folks. I want to spend time understanding the technical uh, parts of our business. Yeah. Uh, I don't uh, spend a lot of time on balance sheets. I don't spend a lot of time uh, pursuing paper trails. Um, we're focused on results, so I like to make deals with customers. Uh, I like to understand what the world is about and stay abreast of that. So, yeah, sales guy. Another reason why we get along, I don't like all those details either. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so I understand that. Um, so I love manufacturing. I, I don't understand it as much as I could or should, but, um, you know, so many people talk about the demise of manufacturing in the United States of America. So your response to that comment? Well, uh, I think as Mark Twain once said, the um, reports of his death are way premature. Uh, I would say the same thing with manufacturing. We've been hit very, very hard. We've hit ourselves very, very hard. Mm. Our focus on uh, offshore, uh, offshoring our uh, industrial output has been misplaced. It's been misplaced for several decades. Um, so it has hurt manufacturing. Why did that happen to begin with? Cost. Cost. Really exclusive. Labor, you know, one even, of the primary things. Frankly, a guy like myself would also say it's a short-sightedness on the part of American industry. Um, uh, as I mentioned, you know, I'm a privately held business. This year and next year and five years are important to me. Yeah. I don't have to manage this quarter. You're not worried about the quarter. Right. Yeah. Those companies that have to manage the quarter and they have to um, manipulate their uh, uh, employment or they might have to manipulate their... Uh, for the balance sheet, for, for the yeah, P&L, for, for that quarter. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a very challenging environment to be in in manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah. We could never do that. We don't lay off. I don't believe in it. I'm going to need these folks. Sometimes we slow down. I'm going to need them when we pick up. Yeah. Um, so ultimately, America did it to ourselves. We wanted cheap enough sneakers that we could buy at uh, you know, one of the big box retailers, and we punished our own manufacturing industry yeah. for that. And I believe that that's coming back. I think that we are poised for a rebound in manufacturing, and I'm excited to be part of that. It seems to be. I mean, the whole uh, the word is reshoring. Whether or not that's living up to its hype, I'm not sure that that's happening yet. But it, it appears to be that manufacturing is getting stronger. There are enough people like you, and actually the big the big guys, if you will, the General Electrics, are seeing financial reasons because ultimately, Chris, they're going to make decisions that are financial. They're going to do it because it's the right thing. I I think they want to, but it's going to be financial. So manufacturing is, is definitely coming back. We're definitely seeing a strength of that. Um, so with that being, you've been here since when? What's in Mundus Blanchstoke? 1943? 1943, the company here in Blairstown since 1996. Okay, and so here you are, um, other than what we talked about, some offshoring happening, what real challenges kind of stick out in your head? If I ask, say the word challenges to you, beyond what we've already talked about. Is there anything in your manufacturing space or anything that you've done, industries going down, what challenges would you uh, kind of maybe kept you up at night? Well, probably um, the most charitable I could be is we have challenges from the government, from a regulatory overreach, 
Uh, we have challenges from our customers because they would like the level of quality that they can buy here in Blairstown, New Jersey, uh, but they would like it at the prices that they can get it manufactured in Indonesia. Um, while I haven't been tremendously impacted by the offshoring uh, uh, move, um, my industry has been impacted mm -hmm. by that. Uh, we haven't been because it's very challenging and difficult to get the sort of things we get we do yeah. offshore. You, you need a very close alliance with your customers, and that automatically means yeah. you can't have them your vendors be. You have a distinctive relationship with the with those vendors that. It's difficult for them to get elsewhere. That's what yes. you've intentionally done. Absolutely. But the challenges uh, to the industry are that um, we can't find help. We can't find good people. For us, again, it's not as big a problem as it is for others because we have a very, very active training program. We start to train our apprentices early. We have a formal training program. I want to get youngsters when they're... Um, driven and motivated. We want to motivate those folks to yeah. stay with us, build a career here, just like my grandfather said. <laughs> build a career here. Stay here. Stay with me. Yeah. I, I, I want to build careers for folks. Our drive is to build a environment like it was when we were growing up. Yeah. That uh, mom and dad were happy to see, uh, to go off to work. They were uh, happy to see the fruits of that in a new car. They were happy to see the fruits of that in an education for their children. We want the same thing to be borne out here. Yeah. I want my folks to be able to do that sort of thing. I can tell you that that's rare. I do work with manufacturers, and the whole idea of an apprenticeship and that kind of thought process is unique. So that's probably one of the reasons why you're doing and why you just described it, um, that it is critical. Um, can't find good people. Good people meaning the talent, the skills, well, exactly what kind of talent are you looking for? You have some pretty sophisticated equipment out there. Um, they are rare to find. Where do, you, where do you find them to begin with? Ironically, we say to anybody that will listen, if uh, when I'm talking to youngsters, I say, if your dad is a plumber or your dad is in construction or if he's a mechanic, those are the sort of folks we want. I want a technical person. So they have an aptitude or a desire for it to begin with. That's all that I need is an aptitude. So uh, you have a program, an apprenticeship program, where they can come in and get into the fold and, and become what you need them to become. And grow a career. And that's and the grow importance. A career. Is they want, I want them to grow a career. Not fill a job, not come and punch a time card, fill a career, have something that they can be proud of, have something they can hang their hat on. Yeah. For years, this country was born on the fact that guys and women would trudge off to work and they would have a career that they could count on. And this is what we build here, is not just a job. I don't want you to come in and just run your piece. I want you to have a career. So that makes me think of two things. I have one, first of all, what industries do you operate in? Are you in several different industries? Yes, our customer base is very diverse. Um, very common for us to be in the semiconductor world, the tech world, where we're developing optical equipment and optical housings, uh, the oil and gas field, okay. um, yeah. a lot of the major uh, research organizations, whether they be some of the national labs or whether they be some of the right. large semiconductor development companies. Those would all be our customer base. So that's some sophisticated stuff. I am pretty sure that you have relationships with some universities that I think are important for you. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about uh, some of those uh, connections there, relationships you have with those universities, and what role do they play in helping you grow well, your one business? Of, one of the most important ones, really, is our relationship with Penn State. Uh, Tim Simpson and the SIMP 3D Lab that is at Penn State yeah. are leading the charge here in the United States in additive <coughs> manufacturing. Uh, we mentioned additive manufacturing before. That's really one of the things we'll probably spend a little more time on, but it is a leading edge, cutting edge technology. And for us to ally ourselves with a place like Penn State, who is doing some very challenging things and is doing some very worthwhile efforts, yeah. um, is very, very uh, fulfilling for us. Yeah, we, I've been down at Penn State. And 
I know Tim. It, it's an incredible place. They do some tremendous things. They do some tremendous things there. Absolutely. Uh, we would also have relationships with Lehigh University and their Emerging Technologies Network and fellows like Gene Lucadama who do a tremendous job down at Le Lehigh University. Rodney um, Ridley up at uh, Wilkes University Wilkes. would be another example of folks that we interact with heavily. Yeah. Engineering outfits, uh, you know, folks that want to push the uh, envelope for new manufacturing technology. So all of those folks we would have involvement with. That sounds very noble. But why do you do that? I do it for twofold. Um, I do it because it's good for my business, um, but I also do it because it's good for my country. Uh, I do it because after three generations, um, I owe something to this country. I believe that I owe a debt of gratitude to those that came before me. Um, I owe it to my stakeholders here in my business, my neighbors, the other folks in um, the area, northeastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey are very important to me. So it may sound um, foolish or it may sound self-serving even, but you'd be surprised that after being at it for 40 years, it's not as much about my bank account, it's not as much about my focus on my business here, it's really about all of us floating a new tide of manufacturing here in the United States. I love it. It's all about significance at this point in time, right? And you're making a difference in the... And then also it plays an important role in innovation. You, you don't sit here and think of all these things yourself, at least I don't think so. No. Right? So, so the universities and anybody that can help you because you are an innovative company, so having those other, I'll call them brainiacs, mm -hmm. <laughs> helping you is, is vitally important. Let's move into, because I do want to spend some time on uh, whatever the right phraseology is, additive manufacturing, 3D printing, whatever the right phraseology is. And before I go to say that, Chris, and your last name is pronounced? Jost. Jost. Spell it. J-O-E-S-T. And Chris is with Imperial Machine and Tool Company, and your website is? www.imperialmachine.com Terrific. Chris, we want to talk about 3D printing additive manufacturing. Why, why, where did that come on your radar? Why do you think it's important? Where do you think it's going? Well, it's an interesting story and of course being a salesman I'll try to shorten it down <laughs> as fast as I can, okay. but that's always a challenge yeah, once you get me talking. Okay, we'll get it going. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we adopt, uh, we're an early adopter of new technologies. My grandfather adopted precision jig boring in the 40s. My father adopted CNC machining in the 60s and 70s. Um, several years ago, I was out searching for new technologies. Frankly, busy shop. Um, I was in my office way much more than I needed to be. Mm -hmm. I was looking around for things to do. This is unusual for me. I am a pretty much a 60-hour work week kind right, of guy, and right, so right. I was sitting around going, what monkey business could I get involved <laughs> in that yeah. is going to be fun and hopefully profitable at some time? Yeah. And I started looking into a, uh, a, a recent purchase at the time. Morris Technologies had been bought in by General Electric. Mm. Morris Technologies was a 3D metal printing house, and as at the time I was looking at another piece of uh, machinery. I was looking at a five-axis machine tool, and as I was looking, we're a multi-axis shop anyway, mm -hmm. so I was looking at a five-axis machine tool, and I started to look at 3D metal printing and thinking, huh, maybe rather than a five-axis machine tool, maybe really what I want is to get into 3D metal printing. Okay, well, stop. So, five-axis, uh, 3D printing, you give, better give us some explanation. I know a lot of manufacturers are going to hear this and understand that, but what is five-axis okay. and what is 3D? So, five-axis machining is the ability to rotate your workpiece on five different axes and be able to present it in certain ways. 3D printing is the, it's actually additive manufacturing is the best term. It is layer, layer. by layer manufacturing and that enables you to create structures that could not be created any other way. In metals, it enables you to do things for cooling and heating and lightning systems that are not possible in any other manner. Um, so the technology itself we found fascinating. So let's go a little deeper on additive manufacturing. I, I want to understand that more. So talk to me more about that. Okay. Um, the important takeaway is that it is a game changer and that it is going to change manufacturing as we know it. 
Uh, that would be a game changer. Right. <laughs> okay. The Manufacturing as when, we know it. Yeah, you know, absolutely as we know it, things will change. They are changing now. It's really what I'm hoping to get across to my fellow business folks. Yeah. This is a tide that is flowing. Those of us that understand how markets work understand that there is something significant that is going on. Yes. Is it going to impact everybody next year or two years or five years from now? Not likely. Is it going to impact everybody a generation from now? Absolutely. So let me interrupt you because there's still people who think, well, that's just for prototypes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and prototypes, certainly there's a use for out of the manufacturing to do a prototype. But that's changing, is it not, Chris? Absolutely. In metal, metal parts, my business is metal manufacturing. We are a full-up machine shop, multi-axis machining house. We have capabilities in sheet metal and welding that um, enable us to build structures that are uh, large and uh, precise. Precise. Now, yeah. when we talk about additive manufacturing, I'm in it because we're in metal manufacturing. So uh, metal additive manufacturing there you go. is the next step for God. my industry. There you go. Does it have to be for everybody? Mm. Not this year or not next year, but it has to be for everybody if you want to be here 20 years from now. Uh, well, I want to introduce something we were talking about before the show started, because uh, I mentioned that I interviewed this gentleman named Daniel Burris, and he's a futurist, and uh, he was on the same path that you're at. He would call that a hard, I think he would call that a hard trend somewhat. This is coming. Yep. This is coming whether you like it or not, buckle up, buttercup. It's going to happen. If you want to be in manufacturing, you better learn more about this. And, the, and he would also call it a soft trend um, in the sense that you can adjust to that. You can say, well, I am going to do that or not do that. You're going to make that choice as a business person. So, okay, additive manufacturing is the correct term. You are just on metals. It, uh, they're doing all kinds of different materials today. I think it really kind of focused on plastics initially, but I don't know if I'm right or wrong on that. Actually, it was hot for a while and it died away, and I think people like you brought that out of manufacturing really sure. kind of back to the forefront. Well, uh, what I would say is the hype, we're over the hype. Uh, we've been in plastics for quite a while. Uh, I think I mentioned to you I own two, pe two Pennsylvania-based businesses that are exclusively additive manufacturing Got businesses. It. Um, so we have been at additive in polymers, it's really the technical term for right. that, uh, for quite some time. <clears throat> metals is a different approach. Metals is what will change everything. Metals can um, provide uh, working components. We are starting to field components that will go into end-use products. They are going out now. We are building into production ramps in industries that people would be very surprised at. Certainly mm -hmm. industries that this will be a game changer for some industries. There will be no components, there, there will be no industries that are not impacted by additive 20 years from now. No doubt about it. That was pretty clear. <laughs> so, so you want to learn more about what Chris is doing, Imperial Machine and Tool, tell me your website again. Uh, ImperialMachine.com. Excellent. I want to uh, start to wrap up, and you're pretty passionate about manufacturing. You're pretty passionate about manufacturing in the United States. You're pretty passionate about careers in manufacturing. So let's wrap up. Give me your heart, your mind, anything in terms of wrapping up this interview. Sure. Uh, what I'd like to say to you, Marty, and what I'd like to say to uh, those of us that may find themselves in our position, there are challenges, but there's always been challenges in manufacturing. There are difficulties, but there's always been difficulties in manufacturing. What is the most important takeaway is for longevity, for the health of your business, for the success of our country and our industry, jump on board. There are some risks. They are being mitigated. Jump on board. You will understand the changes that you can implement will be very beneficial for your business and very beneficial for our country. And I'd like to drive home, and hopefully you'll agree with me, that the opportunities for quote-unquote younger people, it doesn't have to be younger people, any people who, any person who's looking for a career, there are incredible opportunities for people, correct? Absolutely. I mean CNC machining, precision machining, um, the things that you do here at Imperial Machining Tool, wonderful career opportunities. Chris, thanks so much for being uh, part of the show. We really appreciate it. 
Chris with Imperial Machine and Tool. Uh, look him up. You have been listening, actually watching. I'm used to doing the podcast. You have been watching. Chris at Imperial Machine and Tool. I'm your host, Marty Wolf, on the Business Builder Show. So thank you so much, and have a great week. We just wrapped up an interview with Chris Jost from Imperial Machine and Tool Company. We want you to stay for five more minutes. Listen to the brief interview we do with his son, Christian. So stay tuned for five more minutes detailing additive manufacturing. I'm with Christian, and he is with Imperial Machine and Tool Company, or CO. Christian, uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Marty. We just spent some time with your dad. It was a fascinating interview. Your full name and what do you do here at Imperial Machine and Tool Company? Uh, my name is Christian G. Jost, uh, a little bit different than my dad, the middle name. Uh, I'm the Vice President of Sales and Business Development, but I have a strong focus on our additive manufacturing department, yeah. uh, which just uh, we started about four years ago. Four years ago. Okay, great. We did some, spend some time on that. I did spend some time with your dad on that. I want to go a little deeper on that. That's your what you do here, almost entirely or entirely? Uh, I did entirely until recently, but I still have a very strong focus on it. So uh, okay. I'm still uh, in the day -to -day, involved in day-to-day -day operations, but I'm also moving into a sales role for the rest of the company as well. Um, but I still have a very strong focus on the additive side. And you are uh, what generation to come in here? Do you I'm, have that answer right <laughs> out? I am fourth generation. Fourth said generation. Many times, so, yeah. yeah. That's, that's fantastic. And we did want to drive home that point that this business has been here for a while. Sure. And everybody expects it to be here for a lot longer. Sure. And that's why you talk about the importance of your workforce and the development. Now, I think additive manufacturing is going to be one of those things and why this company will be here. Why are you excited about additive, additive manufacturing? Well, one of the things I think is really important for, um, for our company is that we took that step into additive manufacturing. And what makes it so relevant for us is that we're really focused on the long term. So we were able to get into it. But it really allows us flexibility um, in manufacturing and keeps us on the cutting edge of what okay. we're doing. Yeah. So it really keeps us relevant and we're able to do stuff we've never been able to do before. Some of the parts mm -hmm. that are coming out of there, you know, we have machinists on the shop floor who have been machining for 40 years and they see some of that stuff and they're just fascinated by it. So. The new technology. The new technology. Interesting. Um, so yeah. we have people popping in, taking a look all the time at what we're doing, yeah. and then combining that knowledge of additive yeah. with our uh, manufacturing, um, you know, our CNC manufacturing yeah. has really made a huge difference, um, and new stuff is coming out every single day. I'm going to ask the stupid question. So here we go. So the clients that you already have, is this part of your competitive story? So you go and say, well... Five years ago, we couldn't make that part or we couldn't do that, but now we have this. Is that part of your story, if you will? Absolutely. And, okay. and that's really a lot of our um, new customers, we introduce additive and they find it fascinating and maybe they don't have a project right away, but then we also have this tremendous manufacturing capability in general. So it really works um, as, as kind that. of an introduction of what we can do now. For in additive, and then we introduce our CNC machining capabilities, which are state of the art as well. So yeah. they complement each other very, very, very well. For people to learn more about what you're doing, where should they go? Go to your website? Yeah, go to the website. Um, we have a YouTube channel, Imperial Machine and Tool, which you can, uh, there's a lot of videos on additive manufacturing. Uh, but our website, we just launched a new one, uh, has a lot of good information, a lot of good pictures our contact information, and uh, that's the best way to learn. So it looks like this additive manufacturing is like the Internet. It's here to stay. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right? It. I think yeah. it's here to stay. Absolutely. Anything to add? Uh, I'd just like to add that the, you know this, this new generation of uh, people that are getting involved in manufacturing, additives really leading that charge. It's no longer an old, um, dilapidated industry. It's really starting to blossom yeah. with this additive manufacturing, yeah. um, and it's really becoming high-tech and... and and new and people are excited about it. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so many people think of manufacturing as dirty and dark and yes. dingy and th that's nowhere to be seen here at Imperial Machine yeah. and Tool Company. Yeah. It's a cool place. Christian, thanks so much for being Thank part of the Business much. Builder Show. It's great. Thank you. Thanks again to Kevin's Worldwide, one of America's leading promotional products and uniform companies for supporting this edition of the Business Builder Show.
bringing the business classroom to you. It's the Business Builders Show with Marty Wolf. 